A very short time has passed since the presentation of Ace Magic F2, I... This is an innovative mini PC on the new Intel Core Ultra processor. In this case, it is Ultra 5 125H, and there's also a version of Ultra 7 155H. And the fact is that this is not just a processor. This is a processor with a neural processor, so-called NPU, which allows you to do just incredible things for designers, for video editors, for video makers, and in general, just for home use, a very cool thing, because you can do everything on it. Even play a little, although this is not for this mini PC at all. In general, Ace Magic F2i on the Technozon channel. Let's go! Listen, a cool thing. It is very easy to disassemble from behind in order to optimize it. Or rather, add an SSD, you will also see this in our review. A little further, we will unpack it. And there is a very important aspect. This is a new processor with new types of cores. There are actually quite a lot of these cores. They are all divided into different types. For example, for productive, effective, for energy efficient. More on this a little later when we will consider it in CPUs, but the fact is that this configuration is specifically 32 GB DDR5 memory. Plus it has NVMe disk. And this is the most famous processor. With good cooling with two, 5 GBPs LAN. With USB, with the ability to connect to 8K 60 FPS monitors, and the most interesting thing is that it decodes 8K AV01 on the fly. Just without problems, 60 FPS, of course, we will test it too. Listen, it's very interesting. Subscribe, click the bell to not miss our future reviews. And we are on the seller's page. And as we see, I bought it on Ace Magic Dia. It is nowhere else. Ultra 125, Ultra 5 125. And so far, the only option is 32 by 1 terabytes. There is Ultra 7 155 H 1199 5 1099. In principle, I will tell you both. Quite powerful processors, but these are not games processors. Not about gaming. And if you think to compare them with ordinary processors, then we will show you that this is a useless idea. It will show itself as an ordinary mid level processor, but no tests use neural processors. And when you connect neural processors, very interesting things happen. And here we have ChargePT. We have Photoshop. Adobe Premiere. And here we have DDR5. Bluetooth 5.5. By the way, we have an acceleration of artificial intelligence. Wi-Fi 7. Wait a second. Wi-Fi 7. Now we have two types of processors. And here everything starts very cool. Look, 14 cores, 18 threads. Of these 14 cores, there is a distribution between cores of different types. Up to 4.8 GHz in Turbo Boost 65W maximum TDP. This is what concerns Core 7. No, this is what concerns Core 5. Although there is a mistake. It says Core 7. This is about Core 5. We have a 7-core Intel Art Graphics processor. Up to 2.2 GHz. And this is NPU Intel AI boost up to 1.4 gigahertz. This is an additional neural processor, which even as a device in the device manager is displayed as an additional. And here they show interesting things. I'll give you an example of Pro 41, Lightroom 19. Pro Scene Video Editing 31. I call it Pro Scene. I don't know what you call it. I don't know, to be honest. And here is a question of accelerating artificial intelligence. Almost in all applications that have these functions. For example, in Zoom, these effects that are made with the help of AI, they will also be accelerated here with the help of a neural processor. This is very important. Yes, you can even play something. We will definitely play 8K 7 gigahertz. All this is very beautiful. DDR5 memory too. Now further, we are accelerating work in an ordinary co-pilot. This is specifically for working with artificial intelligence. Even in paint, there will be an acceleration. 
in AI Photo and in ClipChamp. A huge number of options for implementing this mini PC. For my part, I tried it in Adobe Premiere. And in Adobe Premiere Pro, we have an acceleration of up to 40. In general, Adobe is the first to join the support of these neural processors. As in their time, they started working with CUDA cores. Here you will not find CUDA cores. This is a completely different architecture. But you will find OpenCL with support for neural processors, roughly speaking. I'll even read you Adobe itself from the press release. With a quote. How new Intel Core Ultra CPUs accelerate video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. We have different items. I will not be under the item for a very long time. Applied acceleration of artificial intelligence. This means that this is faster rendering, export and playback of videos. And this means that in real time, when you edit a video with imposed effects, without pre-rendering, you will practically not have a break. I will show you our very difficult project that we did. Improved multitasking, increased energy efficiency. Well, this is more good for laptops. And now further. We got support for scene edit detection, auto reframe. We have a lot of support for effects. I, for example, faced a very high speed of processing my VR effect, which I used in shooting. It was at the moment of image stabilization. I have Asus Raji Strix 17 on RTX 3060. With AMD Ryzen 6900HX processor, and the fact is that it works with stabilization slower than this little processor. This is really cool. Adobe itself states that plus 39 to 40. They give hardware acceleration using these very neural processors. Everything is very interesting. Everything is very cool. This technology is at the beginning of its development. It will definitely get further development with the release of new drivers. With the release of new applications that will support neural processors, a lot of laptops have already appeared on these Ultra. And now Ace Magic offers us this F2A, which we have already tested very cool thing. Guys, let's go unpack, test, and of course draw conclusions. Here is such an Ace Magic. And the name of the PC means that it works to accelerate artificial intelligence. It is these Intel Core Ultra processors. Here we can see the F2A model. We have 32 GB of RAM 1 terabyte of quince. Well, of course, for the European Union. Nothing else interesting is written here for us. Let's open it. The box, by the way, is great. Look, here it is. Everything is decorated here. And the mini PC itself, it's not small. I will say right away, for the mini PC format, it is not small at all. Of course, I took it out and then packed it for you. I did it. And now we will get the accessories. Let's start with the accessories. We'll go to the mini PC later. Look how much we put here. Mounts, I say right away. There is a mount on the back wall. There are these things for mounting on the back wall, HDMI cable. And the power supply. We have 119 W... Almost 120 W19V6, 3A... Wow, it consumes very well. So the mini PC itself, it's heavy. On the front panel types, two USB 3.0 audio output for headset. On and off button. At the bottom, we have a blower. On the side, we have diffusers. Here we also have a diffuser. And on top, we have everything made for maximum cooling. Everything is on diffusers. Behind, we also have two USB. We have such a two HDMI. LAN RJ45. DC19V is the power input, and the hole for Kensington lock. So what do we have? How does it open? It does not open. It is not clear. Let's, yeah, here I see.
Oh, look how cool it is made. The legs are unscrewed. The legs are unscrewed. The legs are unscrewed. It's good. It's made right on the mind. So, oh. So, very good news. Here is a dope cooler, by the way, for a compartment for SSD and for memory. We have a memory here. Now, let's see what... Yeah, 2x16. This is Kingston. Kingston, wow. We put Kingston memory here. We have Kingston SSD for one terabyte. We can put another SSD here. Let's probably put it in, well, it's still interesting for tests, right? We have it. We want to test something else there. We'll put Kingston Fury here. If Kingston, then Kingston, right? So I need a screwdriver. So, unscrewed, there is... We insert Kingston Fury. I took the lid off, right? In general, I will tell you. You need to tear it like this. Insert, insert, yes. Twisted, this is the connector. Here on the side, everything can be closed. Listen, very, very adequately. Very adequately, we have an installation of this back cover. In order not to interfere, not to disassemble half of the PC. In order to adapt, not adapt, but upgrade your mini PC, this is very cool. Well, everything is clear. I think you can turn it on and test. So let's move on. The most interesting thing we have here is, of course, a processor. A processor with its capabilities. If you go to the computer management, to the device manager, then we will see not only a processor here. Look, we have a lot of processors here. Some cores, everything is fine. Now we will analyze which. We will also see neural processors here. That is, we have Intel iBoost. We have Intel ArcGrefs. Well, we already understood the disk device. There are two Kingston, one that we added, one that was before, and we have network adapters. Where are our network adapters? Here they are. Wi-Fi 7B200, N2, 5 Gbps LAN G45. Listen, everything seems to be fine. Now in CPU-Z, this is Intel Core Ultra 5 125H. We have here, you see, 4 P8 E2 LP18 threads. 4 P is for performance. This is a production 4 cores, 8 effective cores. And 2 low power. This is low energy cores. With low consumption. That is, it is generally good in fast action. You can't compare it with simple processors because these are completely different technologies. We see here now seven nanometers. This is Meteor Lake. Absolutely new architecture, 28W TDP. Can you imagine? 28W memory works here. Well, as usual, we judge the memory four channels, 32 bits it sees. Although I write in two channel mode, DDR5 memory can work. One bar from 64 divides into 32, and each channel goes in 32 bit mode. By the way, we have Kingston on Unix chips. And Intel Arca graphics is not yet defined. Here is the most interesting. We can bench this processor. We are doing a test on all cores. But again, this is wrong. Because we do it on energy efficient. And on simple effective. And on power. Something like that. It's not interesting and compare it with something. But if in a single core test, then it's about, well, let's not 12900. AMD Ryzen 9 3950 loses. For example, Core i5 14600. We have about the same option. Listen, what to compare it with? Ryzen 9 5950X loses to him in a single core. Yes, in a multi-core they will win, because there we have 16 cores, 32 threads. Here we have much less, but we are interested in a single core. And if you run on cores, let's say a test. There was 700 with a trifle, then on high performance cores. Now let's see what we got. We do not look at multi-core. 
because now it does on four high performance cores. That is 732. It's hard enough to determine how to do it now. Benchmarks in this version. For GPU Z, this is our Intel arc. As it writes that while it does not know this graph, it does not know about frequency, not about the bus, not about what this is our GPU 7D55. This is all it can say. Sensors show CPU temperature, GPU load. This is the last version. At the time of shooting, there is no other version. On the disks that are installed, of course we look at which we have. Supplied to the mini PC itself. This is NVM Express 1.3 standard, which is inserted in PCI Express 4.0 X4. And here we have the disk itself. PCI Express 4.0 X4. At the time of the test, it was heated not higher than 62 degrees. The second disk is mine, which I added here. And this is the one that has already worked. Roughly speaking, 288 hours, 272 times. This is the new one. By the speed of the disks themselves, the disk that is supplied with this computer, it showed us the average indicators. These are above the average 3000 MB per second. For direct reading, 2000 for direct recording. And you see the results yourself. And if you look at the second disc and the ability of the bus itself, what we did our QC 3000. If you make an upgrade here, it will take 7000 MB per second. This is just a top indicator. For reading and recording, 6143. This is really good. That is, the bus is implemented correctly. We have no questions about the disks, and it remains for me to show you. Some high performance things like PC Mark tests. I will now upload the test of ADA 64, and it will be very interesting. I will explain why. You see the games here. We will try to play them, but this mini PC is not for games. PC Mark 10 itself does not support neural processors yet. Yes, we got a very high score in the work of this processor. In the work of this computer, the maximum frequency that we caught 4.3 in the PC mark itself, it showed a good result, specifically in rendering. In video editing on the fly, it showed 45 FPS. This is a great result. This is specifically video editing, and this is a very important aspect. This is how you can edit video in rendering it showed in the graph, 99 FPS. Of course, in ray tracing, it was software processing 1668, and in photo editing, it scored excellent points. That is, this is a cool PC for processing video. And in video editing, it scored excellent points. That is, this is a cool PC for processing video. That is, this is a cool PC for processing photo. That is, this is a cool PC for processing video. With the implementation of neural processor, do prepare to give us about 40 increase. Do prepare to give us about 40 increase in comparison with AMD Ryzen 7 7900. In comparison with AMD Ryzen 7 7900. In comparison with AMD Ryzen 7 7900 7840U. And this is the kind of increase that is 40 faster. You can write yes, you can write on it, you can work on it with tables. And of course it has a very good web browsing score. It plays any video on YouTube. It works for video conferencing. Excellent, with great results. And of course the applications are running on it just gorgeous. But if you take, let's say, the same ADA 64. Let's look at the total information. I wonder if the video itself can somehow determine it correctly. Well, no. It writes about Intel Core Ultra 5 125 H4.3 43 X100. Next, Intel Meteor Lake. Two memory cards. Listen, where is it? The graphics processor is interesting. And that's it, in silence. It also does not determine it. Unfortunately, it is as it is. The graphics processor, video windows, video USB does not work. But we can test some points. We can drive, for example, CPU Queen. CPU Queen will not show us the real performance. Again, due to the distribution of these frequencies, or rather, not frequencies, but productive, effective, and other cores, it will show us that it works at the horizon level of 7080x. Although this is complete garbage. In fact, 
PhotoWorks will be a little bit more interesting. Let's try PhotoWorks. This is a rendering photo. All the rest of the performance we can see only in the real tests. For example, for Adobe Premiere. These tests don't show the real performance of Intel Core Ultra processors. In particular, this Intel Core Ultra 5. Here it writes that it is somewhere between the 6-core Core and 76,800 and the 32-core Opteron. Well, something like that. PhotoWorks, and it overtook the Core i9-11900. Core i72700. Oh, Ryzen 7 2700. Ryzen 9 5900X it overtook. And there are a lot of different Core i9-10900. In short, this is one of the most indicative tests because it takes 10 images and renders one after another in order to get the time of this very render. Therefore, these tests are absolutely indicative for us, but what is happening in our network modules? I'll show you now. First, we have Wi-Fi 7 module. Now we have Connect 2, 594X2, 594. It is connected to Wi-Fi 7 router Xiaomi B7000. We can immediately start the test and see some numbers. Well, as much as we got up to one. 6 GBPs on this adapter. Now one. 5 GBPs, but as much as we saw one. 6 GBPs. That is, this is on Wi-Fi 5 GHz 1473. You see, we went to the download of 1600 something. We see in the peak values. This is a very good indicator. Now we switch to 2.4 gigahertz. Here you go. Switch to 2.4 gigahertz. Update our speed test and start the test. In 2.4 gigahertz, these are such average indicators. Absolutely average. Given that the 2.4 gigahertz range is heavily loaded, it is not worth counting on the fact that we will get something big in 2.4 gigahertz. Now in every house there is 2.4 gigahertz. If they at least deactivated those who do not use this 2.4 gigahertz range. If they at least deactivated their own networks. But they won't do anything. Therefore, the router turned on, took the channel. Here you are with good morning. Such a garbage. And the cherry on the cake. This is our cloner G45. We are now connecting it with you. I turned it on. Ethernet connection we have two. 5 GBPs. We update again in test two. 5 GBPs. You should get such indicators too. 1 GBPS for boot and 2.32. 4 GBPS for download. Thus this is a 2 5 GBPS port. We have here in the network modules generally excellent 5 GHz is gorgeous. LAN on G45 is excellent. Here you are 2.32. 4 GBPS what I told you. That is 2. 5 GBPS ports work on our test server even up to 2. 460 GBPS in the peak. Wow, two. 462 GBPs. Super, but in 3D mark, we can do a real test. Because it writes that the system information is incomplete. Such computers are not registered. I scored 3,407 points. But this is again taking into account the real performance of these processors. Which is not yet supported. And of course, we will get to the games. But first, we have to work with one very interesting point. We turn on our second disc. Where is my heavy enough project of the previous mini PC? Which I reviewed. Let's just open this project. And here is our project. The project was released by Premiere Pro. I will tell you at the time of shooting this video. This is practically the latest version. And here we have a very cool moment. If on your computer, let's say with 3060 on Asus Roji Strix. I had to, I just had 12 previews. I had to, I edited VR here, I had to work in 12. Here I work in full preview. In absolute full preview with imposed effects. With imposed transitions. It just works. I'm honestly in shock. How does Intel Core Ultra work specifically for Adobe Premiere? I'm just in shock. I created here. I will tell you why such effects can work. 
I did not work in preview on such a process. Let's say such things. But if I take accelerated effects, and they are accelerated here for this processor, let's go back to the timeline. Open effects and select accelerated specific effects. Then, given that this is not an NVIDIA card, and in the project settings we have no CUDA cores, we have all the hardware GPU acceleration done through the cores, Mercury, Playback, OpenCL, of course. But it all works great, just works great. I just faced acceleration when I tried on VR. That is, this is VR, we stabilized it. Here it is, specifically here we stabilized it. For those who know what it is about, Stabilization of these parts is a very laborious process. Here it is done much faster. Much faster. Here it is, deformation stabilization. If you really know what I'm talking about, you throw deformation stabilization, it conducts analysis in background mode. Here please, it just passes now. And then you choose in real time what to do with it. Either stabilize or frame. or just stabilize, or just frame, and it all works much faster. In this case, this is a really good thing. Specifically for video editing. Specifically for rendering. Very cool thing, let's see this moment. And I'll try to run on rendering. I don't know, let's see what happens. After preparation, it passed this effect to accelerated. And we can just use it here, for example, stabilize. Just try to stabilize. It instantly changes these parameters. That is, if I choose to stabilize frame, it stabilizes. And that's it. Of course, this is just one example. Guys, this is just one example. Let's run on render. Let's go to video. With the attributes of the original file, of course, we will choose rendering at maximum depth in the hardware acceleration. And I honestly say we will render it at 50 megabits per second. Click on export and see what we get. Well, except for the rendering of audio files. And now my rendering time is in accordance with minute by minute. For a mini PC on the installation on Intel Arc. This is just a gorgeous result. That is, I'm on my 3060. With such a number of effects, I could not get such a result. Therefore, this is all really very cool. And I really like it. That is such a mini PC for work to get. It's just lovely. Now about multimedia, here we don't have to talk. Why? Because we can go to YouTube, we can try to play some very heavy video. We can browse on such PCs. Well, honestly, it's already You know, check such things as browsing and multimedia. It's at least stupid. Because it will reproduce everything perfectly. Let's try to turn on 4K decoding. Will it display statistics for sysadmins? Will it display? Let's see. No, it doesn't. Let's try it now. Statistics for sysadmins. Oh, it showed! VP9 without drops. Well, while I was turning it around, there are base drops. That's it, no questions. And we can also try to turn on, let's say, Japan 8K. Here it is. It is specifically an AV1 codec. Let's turn it all over the screen. Here an AV1 codec 4K 60 FPS works just perfect. Just perfect. I don't know, what else do I need? Will it display interesting 8K decoding 60 FPS? 8K decoding in AV1 codec 60 FPS? No questions at all. Super, super. Let's close YouTube. And I think we can try to play something. Although I have a big skepticism about Intel Arc. About games. Let's start with PUBG. So we're in PUBG. The graphics are very low. We set the average. Be sure to try on average. 
It's gonna be hard to play with lower mids, let's go. Let's shoot a bit. So, in the start of the location on mids, it's a bit weak 30, sometimes even lower than 30. Unfortunately, we have to change mids to low ones. Oh ho ho, we understand that this is not for games. Definitely not for games. Let's change it to low 38, 39, 40. You see, this is a mini PC for creativity. For work, let's try some tanks. Oh ho ho, the seventh anniversary, the seventh anniversary of PUBG. Oh, come on, come on, come on. We'll cut this thing. Come here. Damn, you got tired of your emotions. You got tired of it. You prevented me from waving such things. So a helicopter. Let's land somewhere. Let's just merge. Now let's see how much FPS there will be in the real game. And whether it is worth considering for games at all. Of course, no one will play Cyberpunk here. I'm serious. Cyberpunk here has a maximum of 30 FPS on low settings. With some Intel super sampling. Therefore, it is necessary to assess soberly. Wow, it flies next to me. And I'm without sound. How can I be? I'm without sound. Here is another miracle. Where are you falling, friends? With me or without me? Now let's see. Well, without sound, I will merge very quickly. I do not hear the direction of the shot, unfortunately. We have 54. Opa! Bullpup! We take bullpup! Tata, you're in the ass. Didn't even have time to shoot. Let's look at the observations 51, 52, 53 FPS. I think in principle on low settings you can even play. Come on, listen. On very low... Although this is not for the game. Absolutely. We see that the processor temperature does not rise above 64. GPU loaded 98, and I'm interested. And in games, if you use a neural processor to draw frames and so on. No one probably does this, but it's very interesting. Very, very interesting. I would like to see how this is done. Implement in the future. This is still the beginning. Tanks, we must try tanks. For a tank, this mini PC will do 100. Tanks, tanks. Oh, ho, ho, now let's see it once. Let's look at the settings. What did it offer us? What kind of graphics? Through what? So it offered us a low 4K. Well, no, at least we have a full. What 4K? What 4K? Let's apply. Save and put, probably the average graphics settings. Because on Intel Arc, it will look normal. Come on, 105, 115 FPS, 117 on average settings. I think you need to put high at once. Let's choose high. High click apply. So we are on high. We have dropped 8,990. On high settings in the tank. Play here is a pleasure, 90 FPS. Very good. Well, great. Listen, let's go. Now I'll light up everyone like a light. Shoot twice. I need to adjust the sight. I'm going without a sight now. Just tin. From review to review. I do these reviews without sight. Some kind of sad... Listen well, stable 8,090 FPS. Up to 95. So we are now highlighting everyone. We highlight everyone. Bam missed, of course. What else could I do? Come here. Damn, why did you take it away? Up to 100 FPS even in some moments. So let's go. Let's highlight further. Immediately four detected. I missed so, let's go further to shine. Let's go further to shine. The strongest fight. We go around the corner. 
Ah, uh, caught up. Here's another one. There is... Friend, we go further. We go further. Now we will highlight everyone. I tell you, I'm such a light bastard. In short, this is called... Damage by Reconnaissance Data. Did you understand how much? I'll earn a point here. Damage by Reconnaissance Data. Here's another one. Someone else is shooting at me. From behind. Go away, you know where? Far and long. Beautiful watch, the FPS. Everything is really cool. Everything is really cool. Yes, you can really play this. I think you can go out calmly. And look further. What else can you play? On this Intel Core Ultra 5 125H. What are you going to do? Some beasts shoot at me. Let me at least once. I'll put it on you 38. Oh, I missed it already. Well done. I won. Do you know that I won? I beat everyone. In order to play at least somehow in Horizon Zero Dawn, a little over 30 FPS, you will have to set the settings forever performance. That is, it is not even original, and there will be approximately playability like on PlayStation 4 Slim. I'm serious, 3040 FPS, you will get stable. Given that this is not some kind of esports shooter, you can play this. You can really play. I'm serious. If you think that on PS4 Slim, you will have more and better performance, better graphics, then no. Approximately this is what you will have. Although more, if you put the original quality, it will already be from 20 to 30. Well, sorry. There will be completely different graphics quality. Well, there is. We show the truth. Oh ho ho, CS2 just slowed down in the menu itself. That is to say that I can play this. I think not. Because, well, quite... Straight break. Let's expand the settings. I can't even bring the mouse. So we put the settings template low. Here it is already more or less. I kind of understand that it will stop slowing down. Oh, slowed down. Thank God. Thank God. Let's see. Let's put first. Oh, no. Listen, it still goes into the break. My mouse goes into the break. Very strong. So look by frames per second. We have 90. Oh, look. On low settings, this is ping. Oh, not ping. About 100 frames per second. Come on, come here. Damn, about 100 FPS, and here in CS2 we can really play. But only on low settings. Unfortunately, here we need to get used to it, no other way. Very similar to CS 1.6, in which I once played. Damn, this is not my mouse. What the hell? Come on. Come on. There is one. This is good, come on. Come on. Uh, it's not fair when they are under protection. Seriously, not fair at all. But it's playable, very playable. I think that we just need to, oh, let's shoot him in the head. We need to make conclusions already. Specifically on this mini PC, I really liked it. I liked that initially this PC is not for games. This PC is for work, but at the same time you can even play something. Listen, if you just want to play, then this is not about it. And if you want to work, watch videos, render, do some art, do some 3D modeling, and just some kind of home PC for social media, then this is a very cool option as a working mini PC. As a home mini PC, even if you play in World of Tanks, it works just awesome. Of course not for Cyberpunk. Of course not for 3A games like Horizon Forbidden West, because 30 FPS is not a big deal. But Mini PC deserves attention. For its price, an excellent option. With you was Baba on Technozon channel. Bye.